Hi YouTube, I uh, totally miss you guys so much already. Um, so this video is going to cover, you know, the most famous Bible verse there is in existence, which is John 3.16. Um, I did get a couple of questions asking me how to, uh, some tips and like tricks or whatever, um, to battle temptation. And I am going to get to that. Please, that, that's so important, fighting temptation. Um, but I want to get some more, uh knowledge, you know, with scripture, not just my own, uh, thinking. Uh, so give me just a, a, a couple, uh, just give me a little bit more time on that, please. I love to come to you guys as accurate as I possibly can. Um, so you're not, so you know, I'm not just lying or saying anything out of my mouth. I really want to come to you guys with accurate information that you can then go look up for yourselves, right? We're all about truth here. So, before that lesson though, we're going to cover this John 3.16. And I know what you're thinking. This is easily... You know, I know this verse already. I get it. I get it. You know, God so loves the world. Whoever, you know, believes in the Son shall have eternal life, right? But there's a part that we're missing, church. There's a part that we're missing, okay? And what do I mean by this? Is our westernized culture, if you're in America, um, and even other parts of the world, the, the term believe has changed its meaning from what the Bible means it to be. I know this sounds confusing, but I will explain. So, the key word in the verse is going to be believe. But, the word is believeth in the King James Version, which is why we always have to back our scriptures up, my brothers and sisters, okay? Because the King James Version says believeth, but other versions only will say believe. And then when you go to look up the root words of believe and believeth, they're slightly different, but enough to where it could cost you salvation. This is what I mean, like the great amount of detail that is put into the King James Version versus the other versions, right? And not saying you only have to read the King James. I'm not saying that. Go, you know, read the other versions, but always go back it up and do your studying from the King James, because that gives you all your power that you need. But anyway, let's take a look at this. Um, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, whoever believeth him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And the key word there is believeth, right? So what does believeth mean? Believeth means faith and obedience. That's the part everybody's missing, it's obedience. Everyone wants to say, I can say God is real or Jesus is real and that's enough. Like, I'm good. I can live how I want to live. I can sin however much I want to sin, right? I can do all these things against God, but I can say Jesus was real and I'm good because I believe in him. No, our westernized culture of the word believe just means, oh, I hope this happened. Oh, I can see this happening. That's believe. But when you go back to the Hebrew and the Greek root of the word believeth, that means faith and obedience, and John 14, 15 says, if you love me, you will obey my commands, right? So we have to obey God's commands. Not that our works are saving us. Our works are, are, not, are not saving us. But our true faith, if we truly believe something in our heart, we're going to follow that to a T. So we're going to follow Jesus Christ's words to a T. We're going to follow God's commands to a T. And what are his commands? Uh, Matthew uh, 22, verse 37 through 39, right? These are the two greatest commandments. Love thy God with heart, uh, mind, and soul, right? And then the second command is just like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Follow these two commands. So if you're putting God before everything, you're following his commands, right? That's truly having faith in God. But if you're doing everything against God that goes against his will, that's not truly believing in God. That's just professing with your mouth. And I'm going to give you a story that many of you may already know, um, but... Um, will help us understand what I mean by obedience is way more important than just saying with your mouth. So, in Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 through 23, check this out. Many will say to you, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, this is Jesus speaking here, excuse me, and then I will profess unto them, um, depart from me, I never knew you, ye that work iniquity, right? So what happened here? These people obviously knew who Jesus was, but they were doing everything out of their own selves, out of their own corrupt heart. So they were saying, you know, they were telling all these people what they wanted to hear, you're going to be rich, you're going to get a new car, or 
a new chariot in those days, I guess. Uh, you, you know, you're going to have the most successful business. Your kids are going to grow up to be perfect, right? They were telling them all these things using Jesus's name. Right? So they never had a relationship with Jesus. They were doing everything for themselves, seeking man's praise instead of seeking God's word. See what I'm saying? So that's where they went wrong. So Jesus said, dude, I never knew who you were. But from our standard of belief, we would say, oh, I, they should have got in. They believe in Jesus. They did all these things for Jesus. But why didn't they get in? What, what is missing? The whole point is obedience, people. That's what we're missing in that verse. So if it's one thing to just say something, but to walk it as well. You know, we can talk it, but we got to walk it, family. You know what I'm saying? Carry up our crosses daily. Work out our own salvations with fear and trembling. Philippians 2.12, right? So there's that, right? And then here's one of my, uh, another, you know, verse that I, I need people to understand here. Because we're all about truth on this channel. You're going to hear me say some of the same verses all the time. You're going to hear these consistently, right? First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine through 10. Know ye that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God, Right? What is this saying? If you're on that list, you're not getting in. Don't be deceived. We have to follow God's commands. If you claim to be Christian and you are in one of these sins, we must repent. We have to repent, change our mind, change our way, ask God to forgive us, right? But I always love to tell people also keep reading, right? Keep reading. And I'll go back to uh, John 3.16 as well. Um, but on this uh, Corinthians verse here, let's keep reading. Let's let's figure out what you know what's next. What happens next? So we just got a list hit with us. Oh, these are all the things you can't do. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. If you do this, you're not getting in the kingdom of God. Well, a normal person would say, "Man, I've lied before, which is covetous. I've I've lied before. I'm I'm definitely on this list. You know, if you're a parent and you told your kid Santa Claus was real, that's a lie. If you're a kid and you told your parents you never stole a cookie out the cookie jar, that's a lie. So you're guilty right here, right? But then let's keep reading. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed and you were sanctified. You were justified in the name of Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. Thank you, Jesus. So look, what happened? We were all on this list. Some of you may be adulterers. Some of you may be... uh idolaters, you know, worshiping something other than God. Some of you may be fornicators. That's okay. Some of us, you know, are liars or drunkards. That's okay. What, what, what must we do? We must repent and just change our hearts, change our mind. And Jesus even says, that is what some of you were. Or sorry, the word says, that is what some of you were, but you were washed and you were sanctified. So we're good. All our sins have been covered. All we got to do is go to Jesus. That is it. He is our savior. He is our God. He is everything that we need. We love him. We love him. I love him. I hope y'all love him. I love him. That's my Lord and savior. I love him. Um, but yeah, so we're already good. So let's apply this keep reading technique over to John 3, 16, right? So let's say you have a different version. As long as you keep reading, you'll still get the same idea that obedience is you know, necessary. But so many people are lukewarm Christians and, or you can't really be a Christian and lukewarm, but they're lukewarm and don't really want to go all in for God. So they'll read a verse that makes them comfortable. They'll say, uh, you know, as long as I believe in Jesus, I'm okay. That's all, I, that's all I need. I don't need anything else. I'm banking on that. I'm banking on that verse right there. I'm just going, I don't want to give up my life for Jesus. I want to live how I want to live, but I also want to get into heaven at the same time, right? So they'll say, I'm comfortable at that verse, and that'll be the only verse they ever know in the Bible. Sad days, sad days. But let's keep reading, see what happens. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth also means obedience. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, but he hath not believed in the name of only begotten Son. And this is the condemnation that light is to come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light because of their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be uh, reproved. But he that 
doeth truth cometh to the light, and that his deeds may be made manifest that they are right, uh, right in God. So what happens? It came down to deeds. Once again, not that our works are saving us. We are only saved by the blood of Jesus. That is it, right? We're only saved by the blood of Jesus. But uh, what we feel in our hearts is what we reflect. So if we're not reflecting light, we're, we're showing darkness. You know, darkness can't really reflect. But uh, when, when we don't have the light, darkness comes out, out upon us. So we, you know, when we don't obey God, we're obeying darkness. It's, there's, it's black and white. People like to say the world is gray. You know, there's, there's a black area, there's a white area, and then there's an area in the middle that's gray between, you know, right and wrong. No, that's not what my Bible teaches. It is black and white over here, folks. This is a plain instructions on how to get to where we want to go. That's it. If you follow this, you won't get confused. You won't have to listen to the world and what they're teaching. You won't have to go to the churches and depend on a pastor who's only teaching, you know, I want more money, so I'm only going to teach this one thing, right? We got to go to the word for ourselves. But yes, always keep on reading. If you like a verse, read before, read after, so you get the whole context, my people. I love you so very much, my brothers and sisters. That's all I got for you today. Remember, believeth also means obedience. Obey, 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 obey. John 14, 15. If you love me, you will obey my commands. Right? I love you all so very much, my brothers and sisters. I will see you so soon. Peace.